Hello and welcome to another flight review. Today we are flying Canada's second biggest airline on a tiny 727 MAX from Dublin to Toronto, crossing the Atlantic for just $580 in premium economy. I don't want to give away too much, but barely anything was functioning on this Boeing airplane and if it wasn't for the great deal, I wouldn't really recommend it. But let me introduce to you WestJet. Just a few weeks ago, WestJet introduced daily flights from the Irish capital Dublin to Toronto for as cheap as $250 in economy or $500 in the premium cabin. Since I never really had a good flight on Air Canada, I wanted to try an alternative. And here I was, traveling to Canada again. So guys, and here we are, a beautiful good morning from Dublin Airport, crossing the Atlantic today, something I don't do very often. I answer that question why I don't fly or review US-based airlines in this video as well. But the main focus today is gonna be on WestJet 727 MAX in premium economy all the way to Toronto. The check-in experience was smooth and easy, and once I was handed my boarding pass, I made my way to the gate. Since it's sold as premium economy, you don't get lounge access though. Something to keep in mind. And there she was, the infamous 737 MAX 8, the backbone of WestJet's fleet. Smaller planes means less staff and less fuel, making it much more affordable to cross the Atlantic Ocean and one of the reasons why they are selling some of the cheapest tickets from Europe to North America. But now, let's get on board and see what it's like inside the Boeing. I received no welcome at the door and immediately got Air Canada vibes. However, the cabin looked decent, featuring 12 recliner seats in a 2-2 configuration. Ready at my seat was a blanket, a pillow, as well as an amenity kit and a bottle of water. I also had a quick look at the economy class cabin, which features 162 seats. The legroom situation was okay, and each seat comes with a universal power outlet as well as a USB slot. There's no built-in screens, but usually you can stream entertainment to your personal device or even access the internet. But once I settled in my seat, the crew announced that their streaming system is broken and not available on this flight, which leaves everyone without entertainment for the next seven hours. We then pushed back with a 45 minute delay on a fully booked flight. But now it's also a good time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already or check out my Patreon page down below to join my WhatsApp group or to get your KL keyring. After takeoff, we were handed a wet towel and the menu was given out as well. However, chicken was the only meal loaded on this flight, so there wasn't really a point handing out these menus. The crew, however, couldn't care less and wasn't very apologetic about the lack of choice or the broken in-flight entertainment. And the attitude would continue throughout the flight. In terms of crew friendliness, this flight was a real letdown. So guys, we are a good two hours into the flight. I uh, just finished my lunch, which was great. I loved the chicken, it was fresh, uh, quality was pretty good. Um, however, it was the only meal available. I don't know why the crew is handing out menus if they only loaded the chicken, which they communicated um, prior uh, taking the orders. But uh, yeah, there's no choice. Um, as well as the in-flight entertainment and the internet connectivity, both are dysfunctional on this flight, which I guess also takes a big chunk out of what I paid for um, by a price tag of 540 euros, which is 
quite a good deal because the hard product is pretty uh, decent giving it's a seven hour flight um, but yeah there are little ups and downs uh, here on this flight which I do point out and uh, yeah but so far so good but I can imagine that some people might be really really annoyed that their vegetarian option wasn't available or that they have to sit here for seven hours not being able to watch any internet or movies or access the internet so that's a bit of a bummer and uh, not what I expected these things can happen but yeah it's a little bit annoying if uh, as a customer right so and I do remember that I wanted to share with you guys why I can't review US airlines or US based carriers uh, I'm gonna save that story for the Lou review and so uh, stay tuned but let's have a look at the amenity kit on this flight which featured lip balm eye shades earplugs and a pair of socks but now also a quick word from today's sponsor Surfshark VPN. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, my travel companion for the past five years. So let me give you a few good reasons why you should get Surfshark VPN as well. By using Surfshark VPN, you get around online censorship. Whether you want to access TikTok in India, make video calls in the Middle East, or use Instagram in Russia. And all this while protecting your online identity, especially when using public Wi-Fi. My favorite perk, finding cheaper flight deals by changing my location using a VPN. And I'm also able to access different Netflix libraries or watch the highlights of my favorite football team by getting around geolocation blocking. So by using the link in the description box below or use the code word Josh Cahill, you will get three additional months for free. Or if you comfortably sit in front of your TV, use the QR code right here and it takes you right to the offer now let's go back to the review so guys hello from the loo uh yeah small and compact as we know it from the 737 max and i know i promise i tell you the story of why i'm banned from reviewing us-based airlines um but there's a few people waiting to use the loo so i don't want to like occupy it for too long so if you're interested in that story you gotta wait until the end of the video where i give you a comprehensive uh, storytelling um part of why i can't do it um for now we just cruised over greenland beautiful views and uh yeah i think we have another three hours to go and uh, yeah, it's pretty boring without in-flight entertainment, to say the least. After enjoying the great views over Greenland, bringing back amazing memories, another round of snacks was served, this time cheese and crackers, as well as an awful tasting coffee, which wasn't that good. I also listened to Nonstop Dan's new aviation podcast, and I also enjoyed the part when Alex teases him about stealing his nonstop name from Lufthansa. Keep it up, boys. Great podcast. On behalf of all of here, we then finally started our descent into Toronto, and to summarize my flight experience, it was very, very average to say the least. If you sell something, you shouldn't deliver. With the broken internet, in the in-flight entertainment, and no food choices, I felt a little cheated. It would have been nice if the airline compensated its passengers for their shortcomings, but customer service doesn't really seem to be a thing, so keep that in mind when flying WestJet. What stood out for me was definitely the cheap ticket price and the smooth check-in experience. Also, the seat is pretty good for what it is. The crew on my flight was rather below average, lacking motivation and passion. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, I'm back. <laughs> but, I mean, you're back. I live here. You're the one that's back. So here we are. Welcome to Toronto with a beautiful old new face. <laughs> Me, <laughs> Kat. Kat. We did the video before. It was the worst performing video. It was the ever. best performing video. By like Air Canada. Millions right? of hits. But you and don't recognize it yet because you. Oh yeah, I got one, a one, one item. You're but you recognize me <laughs> now. <laughs> so That's dumb. it. And it was the worst video ever. And people said they want Cad back. Here I am. It was such a terrible video, but they want. <laughs> terrible video. <laughs> you're not but funny. Everyone, everyone liked me. Time. But the funny thing is, that's a really funny story. Kat was picking me up. She was wearing the hat. She was trying to be funny. And people thought she was a taxi driver. And people tried to get her. You're opening my like, door. Hey, so dumb. I was laughing. Crying <laughs> away. Laughing. And everyone, that lady was like so confused why I wouldn't pick her up. And she kept on trying Get in. But talking yes. about getting in, I yes. can't get because I, I guys, I said I told you the story why I can't go to America. Because Kat, why can't I go to America? Josh can't go to America because he <laughs> has gone to all the villain countries, all of them. So funny story. I I've been to America a couple of times. Beautiful country. What, what was the last I time love you were America. There? Sure. I love New York. New York is probably my favorite place. <laughs> it's no, the only no. place he likes. I think so I've been to the, the United States a couple of times because people are always like, Josh, why don't you come to America and review our US airlines? So America has to protect because American airlines are so terrible. So the uh, US government <laughs> needs to protect them from coming in for me coming into the country okay. and shame and blame them and show the world how bad they are. So that's why they decided to ban me. I feel like. I think, I don't know, I think that's wrong. So I was to the, I went to the US a couple of times. I'm a law abiding citizen, I was a good guy, I didn't cause any troubles. You can see Canada still accepts me. <laughs> and then I went to Afghanistan in 2019, and then the next couple of weeks after this trip, I got an email that says your ASTA has been cancelled. You're not authorized to travel to the United States anymore. So I went to the embassy in Colombo, in Sri Lanka, and I went there. And I explained myself. I said, hey, I'm a YouTuber. And in order did to fly. Did you show them your YouTube channel? Exactly, I did. And I said, the American people want me to come because the majority of my followers are American section. Okay. Yeah. And then I said, here, if you want to fly those really old planes and Airbus A310 or whatever it is, you have to go to those villain countries. You have to go to Iran, Afghanistan, Libya, <laughs> uh, North Korea, who else is on that list? Afghanistan. And that's why Josh is not allowed so, but I, in Canada. I went there. I'm an open I mean, book. Okay. I explained myself. I said, here, this is what I do. This is why I went there. And I would like to go back to America and create some content. And then he said, Denied! He looks exactly like the guy from uh, Star Wars. You know the villain? The, like, the Mexican Darth guy? Darth Vader. Like the, news, uh, uh, the, the Mexican the, guy. Who's the Mexican guy? With the curly Star hair, with the black hair. That's exactly how he looked like. <laughs> Oscar Isaac! <laughs> He's not Mexican! <laughs> He's not Mexican, but he looks like a Mexican. But you know who I talk about, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so the the, the immigration officer looked exactly like him at okay. the embassy. So I explained my case. Oscar Isaac. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't know he worked in the embassy <laughs> in Colombo. Explained myself. I said, this is what I do. I said, like, I have nothing to hide. I would like to go to America and shoot some videos. And what he said is, like, we're gonna get in touch with you within the next two weeks because we have some more questions. The second I walked out in the embassy, they canceled my 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 case, so I was refused. But they didn't tell me, right? Because he said, "Are oh, we gonna be in touch?" And I was very naive, waiting for two weeks. Not a single email from the no, U.S. embassy. You're too ugly. <laughs> yeah, probably as well. <laughs> and then. I got in touch with the US Embassy in Colombo and I said, hey, they said uh, you guys reach out within two weeks. Uh -huh. I said, no, the second uh, you were you were rejected at the spot. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I was lied to by the Star Wars guy, right? That's not a nice that thing to do. That's not nice, no. He gave me even like a, a green form where he said like, here's the email Deeds. and like whatever. So then, power of social media, I did a tweet and I called out the, the, US, the US ambassador in Sri ambassador. She, she always tweets about our freedom of speech, we have to protect journalists, you have yeah. to go and protest, and that's what I do, aviation journalists, right, yes. she not silence them, and then I, one hour after the tweet, I just said like, Julie, what's this all about, Julie Chung, she's actually uh, from Korea, oh. she's Korean born, uh, so she's the ambassador still. And then I got an email and he wanted to have 15 years, 15 years of travel history. Imagine that. 
If you didn't keep track of your travel history, how would you prove? I would have not been able to do that. But like, like luckily, I have a lock for all my flights and stuff, so I sent. Like you, you written? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a like a little, uh, little app. There's a hearing. It's, 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 it's horrible. <laughs> so, I sent in 15 years of travel history, and it's been one and a half years. Still no visa. And it's still, they're still, still being audited. One and a half years. So. To my dear American viewers, I would love to come to America and create some aviation content there. So if you know anyone at the embassies or you are, maybe a senator watches my videos. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. He's like, what is this? My favorite YouTuber can't come to America? Then and please, now he's stuck in Canada. Please let me know. I have nothing to hide. I'm not a threat. I've been to America before. They love me. American Who's people they? love they me. They don't love you. They love my accent. No, they don't. Like, oh, they're so confused. Yeah, no, they're, can, they're like, we can't understand you. So yeah. We can't understand you. That's the story. I can cross the Atlantic, but I cannot enter the United States of America. So if you want me to review your airlines, get Is it touch. just by flying? Maybe I can. we can drive over. No, you need an ISTA now as well. Back yeah. like a year ago, you could have smuggled me into Canada. <laughs> <laughs> from Canada, but now unfortunately it doesn't work like this. And I'm a law abiding citizen, I can just uh, legally migrate. I can put you in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hello, <laughs> can we check? No, <laughs> that's why we don't do any videos together anymore because you're not funny. I'm so funny, that's so funny. but yeah, that's the story. That's it. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Like what and subscribe! I like and subscribe! No, don't mind, don't subscribe, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. But check out my Patreon for some extra perks. If you want to join my WhatsApp group, get the Cahill keyring. Do you have a no. keyring? Where's a keyring? No, you didn't give me one yet. <laughs> I'll give you a sticker, huh? Nah. And she put it on her bin. <laughs> very, very nice. So this is it, that's my sad story. So help me go to America. So many great Air American Airlines, United, American Airlines, Delta, Delta all the nice regional airlines, I can do train reviews, so much! I can take the bus, the Greyhound Ooh, bus. Take the Greyhound <laughs> bus, you will be really good. <laughs> so much to do, but yeah, in order to all this, I need a visa, I need to be accepted into America. But if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. America only takes hot They're people. lost, That's right? right. Yeah, there you go. Baby, you're such, no ugly people allowed. You're such an asset to that channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Anyways, this is it. My next trip is on Copper. Copper Airlines from Canada, from Toronto to Panama. The Panama City. You didn't tell me that. You're going to Bolivia. Yeah, I'm going to stop in, in Panama. Copper Airlines in economy class to Panama. And then from Panama to Santa Cruz in business class on the 737. Again, but it's not a max. It's a... Uh, it's a Dash 800. What's your favorite airplane? My favorite airplane is Bombardier. the one that is the fat one. The fat one. The fat oh, one. Oh, the 380. With the two the double levels. Decker. The 380. With the spiral staircase. And which airline is flying it? It is one of. Air Canada. No. Air Canada has 380s. With the spiral staircase? Yeah. Oh, Air, then Air Canada Air has the biggest Canada is my favorite. Air Canada has, like, <laughs> has 380, biggest 380 fleet in the world. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Oh. Canada is a great airline. Good one. <laughs> Good one! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is it. That was the story. I'm sorry, I do apologize. Uh, I was okay. the best part. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of WestJet today mm. on the Max <laughs> and about my sad little story not being able to enter America. See you.